This clip is brought to you by SaveWithConrad.com. All right, next question, JR, from Pender J. He said, if Hogan had hypothetically, again, this is hypothetical, turned heel in the WWF in 1993, how do you think that would have changed the dynamic of the 1996 turn, or would it have even happened? Well, you know, would have, would have, would have had it, any steam. Yeah, it would have impacted it because Hogan's major heel turn that we just talked about was a first. That's right. National TV, full blown heel. Uh, and so I think that was, it would have, if he had turned heel in 93, speaking of, of Hulk, pronoun boy, he killed him. <laughs> Who is he? Who's him? Uh, one of my pet peeves this morning. All good. Uh, but I think that, uh, I don't think that it might not have happened. And, but you know, Vince would have, would have been really convinced he was such a Hoganite, you know, he'll create the character. Yeah. It's his baby. So he, be he believed that Hogan was the supreme ultimate baby face. And he would have had to had a strong, strong argument, Paul, to, to, to change horses, to change jerseys for the Hulkster. So, uh, it worked out for WCW the best, you know, quite frankly, I think. You know, the fact that we didn't turn Hogan heel in 93 and quite honestly, uh, he would have probably been a damn good heel in 93. You know, there's a lot of guys that would, you know, he could have matches with a lot of guys, but that's just not what Vince felt. And it had to be a special set of circumstances for this all to happen. And what we just saw, they set the WCW and Eric so forth, set the table very well in the standpoint that you got all your primo baby faces in the ring and. And then Hogan comes and does this. And you notice in, in the, in the Hogan got all the physicality in when he came in the ring, yeah, Hall and Nash became kind of backed away a little bit. They were in the foreground. They yes. were encouraging him, Yes. but it was all Hogan. And, and of course, Hogan went after his biggest rival, Randy Savage. So they put marriages back together. They created a new ma matches, new opponents. So that in that respect, it was really, really good. But I think a, a turn in 93 in WWE for Hogan would have adversely affected what we just saw. Yeah, you go to Kevin and Nash and uh, Scott Hall po doing the Hogan poses behind him. I mean, now Hogan's obviously the leader. He's 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 the man. So They've acquiesced that Hogan's going to be the guy. That's right. All right. Now, uh, based on, on, on this line of thought, a uh, uh, good friend of the show, Paul Bromwell, writes in a question here. <laughs> uh, so based on... Hogan and like you said, if he they turn him in '93, that could have set up a series of opponents. Maybe been a nice refresh for him. Seeing what they've done now with Roman Reigns, and really, it's taken his career in a whole new, amazing direction. If you ask me, uh, making him heal. Do you think they kind of missed an opportunity with John Cena along the way to make him a heel? Probably, but Vince had the same strong babyface feelings for John Cena that he did for Hulk Hogan. Yeah, the superhero. Uh, you know, the, the, the epitome of a baby face, what a baby face is supposed to be, how he's supposed to represent. And Cena did that well beyond just the lens of the camera. You know, he's, he's granted more make a wish, uh, make a wish, uh, request than anybody ever in the, in the history. And a lot of stars, a lot of ball players do make a wishes. And of course, for those of the, those of you that may not know what a make a wish kid is. It's a kid that's been diagnosed with terminal illness. And so you try to make their, their life as comfortable and as happy and as, and, and provide these wishes that, uh, when they want to meet John Cena more often than not, they got to meet John Cena. So, you know, if it worked out that way. So, uh, he, he loved the uh, Cena's uh, game plan and how he represented the company and all that. So, but certainly, uh, if you got a personal issue where let's say it was seen in rock and it was just personal between the two of them. I'm the man. No, you're, you know, you're no, I'm the man. No, you're, you know, blah, blah, blah. Then all of a sudden, uh, it's a little different presentation than Cena turning full blown heel and being an adversary of every baby face that he encounters. He can only, he can only, uh, have, uh, negative reactions and physicality and so forth with the person that he has this issue with. So it's a different turn. It's kind of like wrestling one-on-one here. I'm teaching a class this morning. It seems like, uh, 
uh, which is good. I love this. We're here for it, and we love I, it. I, I love it. So, uh, but it, it's 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 a different presentation than uh, than a normal heel turn or baby face turn to a heel. Roman Reigns has done. He found his personality, hmm. and and he found out he found it. He discovered his voice, so to speak. And I also think that Heyman, Paul Heyman, my old broadcast partner, uh, was, uh, has been instrumental in the evolution of the Roman Reigns TV persona. So it's, you just got to find your voice. You got to find what's going to fit for you. And as we uh, talked about here in this, uh, this match, we just saw it was the right place at the right time with the right pieces in place and just really extremely well executed. It was also a character refresh Hogan needed and it needed a, it needed not only from baby face to heel, but a refresh from the red and yellow vitamins prayers. And, uh, you know, Cena with, uh, you know, you can't see me and all that good stuff. Anyway, a lot of guys in my demographic, I say all that to say would have loved a, a Cena heel turn. Cause man, we, uh, I'm definitely not a biggest fans for, for, uh, for Cena, the women, well, the he, kids, uh, they loved them, but. He got overexposed, Paul. He got yeah. overexposed, and he was for, he was kind of force fed. Yes, not John's fault. John's fault. No. Doing the, running the plays that he's he's called. Wait, I understand that. Yeah. So you know, I just think that uh, I mean, I, I'm with you. Yeah. Uh, with a, with a top baby face, that a, a personal issue that is plausible and believable is created for the two to interact. He would have had a nice heel run, no doubt about that. But I think part of his issue was uh, that people didn't like John. He didn't heal. He didn't run. He didn't, he didn't cower. He didn't lie and cheat and steal. He, he just, uh, was overexposed. I thought, and that's the thing. And it's bad. On, Cause I recruited a guy, you know, he was yeah. driving limos and living in his car and mm. working for a moving company. And when I saw, when I saw him the first time at, uh, Rick Bassman's operation out there in Southern California, uh, and so. I, I, I believed in him from day one. I even told Vince when I got back, I took a red eye back from LA to New York, went straight to the office and, uh, I got there about 10 and Vince was just getting in. And I said, man, I, th I think I signed our WrestleMania main event in five years. Wow. I felt that good about it. And of course, you know, he got to bring everybody back down to reality. <laughs> <laughs> I think it should go home and take a shower. So I think shave. Whatever. <laughs> go, go take a cold shower, Jr. Uh, yeah, go <laughs> go wash that airplane off. Maybe come back to work. Get something done. But but he had never seen John. He didn't know what I was talking about. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, he had no clue. He hadn't seen the video on it. It's all, you know. Bruce had. Uh, Bruce had made some trips out there too for uh, to to look back ba Bassman's guys, uh, and he had more than one guy. But the Cena was one that popped popped me. There you go. When I sit down and talk to him, it's a different conversation. You know, uh, when you, you're me talking to Cena about coming to work or his career goals or what's in your head, or, uh, that's a whole different conversation than you have with, with most of the time. It's very unique. Yeah. Smart and guy. I needed, I'm on a, I'm on a fact finding mission. Were you a fan as a kid? Oh yeah. Well, who's your favorite wrestler? Okay. And who was her biggest adversary? So you, you kind of throw a little quiz at everybody to see if they're bullshitting you or not. Sure. But they know I want to hear, oh yeah, I've been a fan all my life. This is all I want to do. And that's a little scary in itself. I'm not big on guys to say this is all I've ever wanted to do. And this, this is, this is everything to me. I don't know if I want to be everything in your life. I don't know if the wrestling business should be everything in your life. How about family? How about your health? You know, how about staying out of trouble, so forth and so on. So, uh, it's a interesting thing, but we, I found out that John Cena was a Supreme wrestling fan and he, he answered all my questions and he, he would outline, he would, he would go back and re do like what we're doing now. Only we just do it mentally, a uh, little watch alongs. He knew what moved him. He knew what made him turn his head, but he raised his eyebrows, what made him remember. So I knew that we had a guy there that uh, didn't have any issues being in the wrestling business because I have had guys that I felt like I signed that had such great upside. If we get them turned the right direction, uh, that they would, you know, be successful. 
Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson. Thanks for checking out the podcast here on YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you get a notice anytime we upload some new content. And go save yourself some money right now. If you're in a 30-year loan or you have credit card debt, it's not a matter of if I can save you money. It's a matter of how much. Find out right now for free at SaveWithConrad.com.